can speak to you today, I guarantee it. So let's talk about the Feast of Purim from Esther 9 on uh, and the lunar cycle. So in uh, this year, coming up this week, uh, we have a lunar cycle and that's a moon cycle. In 480 BC, which is the time of Esther, matches exactly the same cycle. Yeah, really, Apostle Stan's going, mm. Yeah, you'll connect the dots. So it's the same cycle happening right now. So Purim in 2024, this week, begins on March 23rd at sundown. Sundown Saturday and ends sundown March 24th on Sunday. So Purim is being repeated this year. Purim is right now. Yeah, it's this weekend, this weekend. And so, the, you know, the Jews don't recognize this as nothing more than just a party. But this, it's an eclipse, it's a moon eclipse, and uh, it's a repeat. So, you know, this is when the Jewish people, uh, King Artaxerxes gave a, how should I say, a mandate that they would kill the Jews because of Haman, and the tables got turned. You know, it looked like it was really bad, but, uh, you know, the scripture says what uh, the enemy meant for evil, the Lord meant for good. He turned the tables around, and, and the Jews got delivered. Now, uh, they don't recognize all this stuff, I don't think, because they're just having a big party. It'll be party time. And Ice of March. Okay. Uh, lunar. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the yeah, Esther is not a Levitical feast. Um, lunar or moon eclipse stages. So this is for all you wily people. If you want to see the moon eclipse uh, on the 25th, get up and go outside on um, 2, 12 a.m. in the morning. Set your alarm so you don't oversleep. And you can see the moon eclipse. I'm sleeping. I'm not getting up to see that. Now, let's talk about the Super Bowl. We're, we're shifting gears. How many in here have heard of the Chiefs Super Bowl prophecy? Raise your hand. Not one person. Well, new information for y'all then. This is connected with Perm. So uh, Super Bowl 54 was on February 2nd of 2020. So you take Perm, you add one day, which brings you to 3-11-2020. And guess what they announced? Uh, CV-19 was announced. Okay, that was in 20, right? Remember that? Okay, that's a great question, because I looked at that and thought, hmm, how, how does those numbers line up? Well, the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl was this day. But Purim was not the next day after Super Bowl. It's a different date. So I'm saying the Chiefs won the Super Bowl on February 2nd, and then in Purim, which would be March, it would have been actually March 10th in 2020, you had one day, it comes to March 11th, okay. okay? And that's when they announced the pandemic. Okay, moving along, Super Bowl 57, last year, not this, this year, 20, 2023, they played February 12th, they won again, right? Yes. Okay, this is the chief Super Bowl prophecy that y'all never heard of. Uh, so you take Purim, you had one day, and Silicon, Valley Bank goes belly up. So, Super Bowl 58, they win again. Okay, so we got Purim coming up Saturday night and ends Sunday. So, am I predicting something? No, but think about it. So, when would the next day be for something to happen? Okay, Purim plus one day, it ends Sunday night, so... That means in 24 hours, Purim plus one day, it would be Monday night at sundown. Monday or Tuesday, look for something. I'm not saying anything will happen. I'm just saying there's a track record here, okay? 
I was hoping Leslie was in here because she's, she's got a red dress on today. <laughs> I was going to go, I see red. <laughs> so we're switching from Purim to the red heifer. See the holy cow there? This is a red heifer. We're going to talk about, yeah, the holy cow. The holy cow, you know, is uh, Indians. They think they're reincarnated. Uh, they don't eat beef because they think the cow is an ancestor, reincarnated, you know. So, you know, they got starving kids over there, but they're not eating cows because they don't want to eat grandpa and grandma. <laughs> so we're pagans because we eat hamburger and steak. Okay, let's look at Nehemiah 4, 1 through 3. It says, but it came to pass that when Sanblat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Now, this is connected with what, in my opinion, is connected to, to what's going on in Israel right now. Next slide. Verse 2, and he spoke before his brothers in the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? We would say, what are these Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Verse 3, or not yet. Will they sacrifice? This is the key to this whole thing. Will they sacrifice? What are they going to sacrifice? They're going to sacrifice a red heifer. Okay, no, I'm not putting a date on this. I'm just saying this is scripture. Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? You know, the temple was burned, right? Torn to pieces. And now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. See, they want to destroy the Jews. And this spirit is still operating today. And I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, the reason that um, Hamas attacked Israel was because they have some red heifers over there. And they're thinking one plus one equals three, right? They're putting the dots together. They're going to get the red heifer, sacrifice it, get the ashes. Then they can sanctify the new temple, and they can start the animal sacrifice. So they see the writing on the wall, and they attack them. That's what's happening. Same thing, see? Going back here. It came to pass when they saw, they heard that they built the wall. They were angry. That's what's happening. Will they sacrifice? Yes, they will. If they get the ashes, they'll build the temple. They will sacrifice. There are those that also think that they have to tear down the mosque in order to do that. Yeah, they yeah. Like they're, they're not going to sacrifice in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And, and I haven't studied this out, but I've been told that the Al-Aqsa Mosque is not the r real site of where the temple is supposed to be. So they'll probably just leave that one alone and make a new one. Yeah, uh, Israel's messed up. Go there and find out for yourself. Breaking news. Five pure red heifers arrive in Israel ready for the temple. Um, they're there right now. And guess what? Four are still approved. Yeah, four are kosher. He said four are approved. They call it kosher. So check this out, Texans. You want to get beef? Come to Texas. <laughs> The amazing journey of the red heifers from Texas to Israel. Did you know they came from Texas? Everything's better in Texas. Plano, come. Spirit of Prophecy Church. And get your hamburgers and steaks right here. One heifer came from a Houston ranch. A heifer is a female cow that has never been bred. You know, it would be basically like a teenager, a young, a young cow. Four heifers came from Triple Creek Ranch in Rockwall, the town that Tony lives in. Evangelist Tony lives in Rockwall. Bet you didn't even know that. Five red heifers have been blamed for all the problems in Israel since October 7th, the date of the attack. I'm telling you, there's a connection here. They see the writing on the wall. They had no reason to attack him. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Uh, this is a warfare scripture from the days of John the Baptist. Until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. You know, the enemy's violent too. Amen. 
and Christians not so violent. You know, we need to be, I'm not saying guns, knives, bullets, but we need to fight in prayer. And we need to speak up and say, you know, not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. You know, stop cussing in front of me. So on October 7th last year, Hamas attacked Israel for no reason. Why? Hamas wants to stop Israel from getting a red heifer, from building a temple, from starting the animal sacrifice. And the third temple is in the works. Here's the enemies of Israel, and I would say of America, because you know they call Israel the big Satan, and they call America the little Satan. They hate us. They absolutely can't stand it. I'm, I'm saying America, the Christians in particular. Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, they're afraid of Israel, and they should be. In fact, Israel would wipe them out, but you know because of the politics involved, um, they're holding back, and um, our president is strongly trying to get them to have a peace deal. Stop fighting, you know. And even Israel is sending humanitarian aid over to the people in Gaza. They're trying to be nice. See, Israel's winning. <laughs> they got some help. Okay. Now we're going to switch over to another topic called the eclipse. See, there's your, this is a solar eclipse when the moon goes in front of the sun and blocks it. But what you're saying is about to happen is a lunar eclipse. Planet. We got both, both of them. This Saturday night will be a lunar eclipse on the Feast of Purim. This is going to be in April. So you don't have to wait long for it. And you know what? The world is paying attention to this. I don't think the world is paying attention to the lunar eclipse, but they're definitely, you know, this is all over the news. And it's going to be perfect to see it right here in Texas. Okay. God is speaking here. Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show if there's handiwork. X marks the spot. Let's check this out. A pattern, I'm going to talk about some eclipses now, of old, well, 1800s, that's pretty old when you're 63 in 2024, or 68, I was 63, now I'm 68. The pattern of two solar eclipses formed in X over the United States of America in the 1800s. And you can check this out, this is history. You can find this on the internet. Something bad happened. The first solar eclipse was June 16th, 1806. The second eclipse, completing an X on September 17th, 1811. 1806, 1811. The intersection happened over the new Madrid Fault. We've heard that before, right? There's a certain person in here that likes to talk about that. It's not very far from Texas. The intersection happened at the Madrid Fault, which includes Cairo, Illinois. Did you know there's a Cairo, Illinois? There's so many strange things in this PowerPoint. Cairo, Egypt, Cairo, Illinois. I never knew that. I learned some things making this PowerPoint. Southern Illinois, known as Little Egypt. Anybody know that? No Illinois people here. There you go. There's a map. This actually is a low, kind of like a bog area. It's, it's, I think uh, one of these towns has a dike around the whole city because if it floods, it, it's like a pond. It's, it's below, I'm not going to say below sea level, but it's a low spot there. Yeah, below flood level. So that's uh, this about a third part of Illinois. They call that Little Egypt. And there you can see Cairo. Okay, can't make this stuff up. Three months later, so they had the two solar eclipses, made an X over 
that area three months later on December 11th or uh, 16th, December 16th, 1811 were the biggest earthquakes in American history. This was a big earthquake. Let me go back to this. So they say the earthquake made the Mississippi River, which is the biggest river in America, run backwards. And uh, the Liberty Bell, it made the Liberty Bell ring. I don't know how many miles away, but a long ways away. So it really shook some things up and a lot of people died on that day. So you can read about it on the internet. Okay, so Luke 21, 25 and 26, there shall be signs. That's what we're looking at. These are signs. God put them in there to teach us something. He's speaking. Signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations. We have that now, right? And perplexity. People don't know whether they're a man or a woman. I'd say they're perplexed. The sea and the waves roaring, you know. All, in other words, all hell breaking loose. Even the pagans, the you non-Christians know, are thinking, what is wrong with America? And what is wrong with the world? We got wars everywhere. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Will there be a repeat? Okay, let's go to this map here of the, we had a solar eclipse in August 21st, 2017. You see it started up here in Oregon and it exited in South Carolina. You see all these, it went right through the center of America. Idaho, Wyoming, Nebraska, got a lady who grew up in Nebraska, Kansas City, Missouri, and on through. So that was in 2017. It ends passing through Fort Sumter, that would be this is interesting. It went through South Carolina, and the last city it went through was Fort Sumter. Anybody know what Fort Sumter is famous for? Start. How did you know that? <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> That's where the first shot was fired. I've been barraged with this. And as I recall, if I'm thinking correctly, this is the, the one that happened back in 17. And yep. The, it also passes through seven cities, I believe it is, with the name Salem. And then the other one has seven cities with the name Nineveh. Salem is peace. Nineveh, of course, is the whole story of that. So that. He's correct. I think the watchman has been studying. Yeah. Also for Shalom. Shalom. And we have a Prince of Peace, right? Okay, so that's where the Civil War began. Let's continue on. So there we go. Right there, the first shots of the Civil War. Somebody that I hang out with has been talking about an internal revolution. <laughs> August 21st of 2017, the eclipse goes over seven cities with a Bible name, and that name is, what is it about seven? Seven is a big number. Let's talk about that. See, this is God speaking to you, brothers and sisters. Seven spirits of God stand before the throne. Seven seals on the book, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through them all, but... Seven's a big deal in the Bible. The number seven in the Bible represents, they say, divine perfection, totality or completion, and it is mentioned at least 490 times. What is also mentioned 490 times? You know, Peter says to Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? And he goes, no, 70 times seven. That's 490. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> there we go. There's the scripture. How many times shall I forgive? 
Okay, so it goes over this 2017 went over seven, they say Jerusalem's, it's actually Salem's. And here you go, Salem, Oregon, here's a boo-boo, see, I caught this. It says Salem, North Dakota. Well, North Dakota is right here. It's supposed to be ID, ID, Idaho, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Nebraska. Did you know there's a Salem, Nebraska? Well, now you do. Salem, Mo, Salem, Kentucky, South Carolina. So, isn't that weird? Just so happens. There you go. Salem, Shalom, peace, Prince of Peace. Seven years of peace. Okay, that was in 2017, right? 2017, we have seven years of peace. At almost seven years, what do you come up with? Oh, this is a coincidence. And that's, this is the date, uh, April 8th, is when the solar eclipse is going to happen. And you can go outside. You don't have to wake up uh, in the middle of the night. You can just walk out in the afternoon. You'll see this thing. <sighs> Exodus 4, 8. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to thy voice the first sign, this is Moses going like, I can't talk right. You know, how, why send somebody else? And God's getting mad at him. And so he goes, I'll give you a sign. Then I'll give you another sign. He says, they'll believe the latter sign. You know, put his hand in his bosom, pull it out. It's white, leprous. Put it back in, pull it out. It's perfectly normal. But, you know, God had his hand in that. Yeah. So he hardened, yeah, <laughs> pun intended. So Pharaoh, he hardened his heart. It wouldn't matter what he did. He didn't believe, you know, so the ten plagues. God was showing how he was defeating all the gods of Egypt. This is a, I've got two or three of these. This is the April 8th path of the eclipse. This coming next month, you can see it's going to be here in Dallas at 1.40 p.m. So set your clock. You can go out and see this thing. It goes all the way out through Vermont. But don't look up at it. Yeah, don't look at it bare-eyed. You can go buy your little eclipse glasses or read the Internet. You can do some different things to see it. I'll probably go get some glasses. I think they're 10 bucks. Solar glasses. Make sure they're rated solar. No, we have some problems here in Texas, don't we? You know, the, the West Texas is burning, and we have an invasion happening, yes. right? That our governor is trying to put the kibosh on. So we, we got some problems. Guess where the eclipse starts through the first town? Eagle Pass. Guess where the invasion is happening? Here's another picture of the eclipse. Here you see, like, when it comes over Oregon, it'll be at a one-tenth cover the sun. But as it comes over here, it's at 100%, and it goes right over, right there. They call that, there's a name for that, full maximum blackout or whatever right over Texas Rockwall Texas Tony right where the red heifers came from we're, we're gonna have a bird's eye view of this thing here's another picture April 8th you can see the path so that will, will it, get totally black there? it won't get black it gets like dusk because uh, like a really, really bright moonlit night. So it won't be night black, like no light at all. It just, you know. You, you can actually, if, if you're watching ahead of time, you can actually see the moon coming in and making a, a, a crescent and then half a pie and then three quarters and then black and then it leaves the same way. So... You can watch this stuff. I've seen solar eclipses. I seen one when I was a kid back in Iowa. We saw one. 
Killeen, Texas. Okay, uh, I like this because Colleen, that's uh, where we go to the prayer house to fast and pray in Colleen. They call it Prayer Mountain. Then it goes to Dallas Hot Springs. That's another place where we uh, have Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. It's going to go right over the Deliverance Camp and, uh, and on and on throughout. The X marks the spot. Let's talk about this. So here's the two eclipses making an X, the 17 and the 24. Do you think God might be trying to tell us something? I think he is. Okay, see that? There's your X, there's Illinois, the southern tip of Illinois, which includes Cairo and Little Egypt. Oh, but wait, there's more. Let's have an infomercial. Seven more cities with Bible names. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign and there shall be no sign. Be given it, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. Here's the names. Did you know there's this many Nineveh's? There's more, but this covers, this goes over the path. This is the path. Did you know there's a Nineveh, Texas? How odd this would be. What do you think the first town is before it goes through Nineveh, Texas? I haven't verified this, but I'm sure it's two. They tell me it's Jonah, Texas. <laughs> All right. And there's even one more it goes through, which is in Canada. It exits through Canada. There's a Nineveh in Canada. I'm telling you. Yeah, God is speaking. <laughs> Additionally, the eclipse will pass over the city named Nineveh, Nova Scotia. Okay, there we go. Eight. Eight. Uh, so, triple eclipse. Now, let's button this thing up here. There's a triple eclipse. This one happened October 14th. Check this out. Now, I'm sure none of you know what this means. Well, you might. Somebody would have to be studying the Hebrew alphabet to know what this means. Mm -hmm. He said it. It's an olive. There we go. An olive. This is a pictograph. Represents an ox head, ox head. And there is the A, which is the alphabet. Which, Yeah, there it is. It's, it's doesn't look like an A. It just looks like three lines going across America. I'm telling you, the guy signed his name. Okay, it means strength, power, authority, leader. So this is what, what this means is strength of the leader. There you have another. This is, uh, you know, they read uh, right to left. So this is the new olive. This, this here is, they call it paleo. It's the original, more ancient way to write the Hebrew alphabet. But now they do modern. They write it like this. This is the Aleph, and this is right there, the Tav, the Aleph and the Tav, or the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. So here's some more Phoenician alphabet. You can see the Aleph, and there's what the Tav. Guess what that looks like? The cross? Yeah, you, we, I think we're going to have, we got... <laughs> Just, after, I'm, I'm, so. try, I'm trying to be quiet. Okay, no, I want so. you to talk. <laughs> okay. I give you permission to speak. <laughs> okay, then back up. Let me see your, your remote, please. Yeah, come on up here. Okay. Let's have church. I've, I've done a little bit of studies into the Hebrew alphabet. So let me show you something that uh, would be one of the things I'd like to show everybody. So this, the, if you're looking... It's the one that looks like a cow. Okay, so what was the name of the cow that Moses killed 3,000 people over because they worshipped it when they come down, when he came down from Mount Sinai when he had broken the tablets? The name was called Molech. Okay, so it's a cow. 
or if you like basketball, you call it the Chicago Bulls. I think it's the same thing. It's worshiping a cow. Now, if you go back over to this one, uh, the, the, when Ron Wyatt said he found the Ark of the Covenant, and inside the Ark of the Covenant were ten, uh, the Ten Commandments, he told me that they were written in ancient Hebrew. I don't think that's a ancient Hebrew. You know, I think he called it right. That's Paleo Hebrew. Do you also have ancient Hebrew? I guess you no, don't. I don't. Right? No. Okay, so th this will work for what I need to say. But so instead of this, an ancient Hebrew, instead of a, a backwards, slanted, leaning on its side A, if you jump down here to Tav, that looks like a cross. So what I think it's really saying is that the beginning of man, the first thing we worshipped was the cow, or this guy here, or Moloch, and in the ancient Hebrew, it began with the cow and ended with the cross. In other words, it began with Moloch worship, but it ended up with Christ at the cross. I don't think that's an accident. And I'm still praying about and doing research about possibly bringing an entire teaching on this because I think that there are so many errors in modern Hebrew that the devil, through some of his rabbis that are not spirit-filled. They're mystics. Ha that's right, have brought, it's shocking. And if I were to start in in interpreting through ancient Hebrew, what some of the, like for example, uh, I'm not prepared to talk about this yet, but Jehovah, what it really means would shock you. His name is talking about Christ dying on the cross. If you go back into the ancient Hebrew, that's the same Hebrew that the Ten Commandments were written in in the days of Moses. And this and this, I don't think is the way God would write today. I think the way God would write today would be in this. Not this, not this, but that is the Aleph or Moloch. I'll have to bring a teaching on it now. Yeah, now we want to see it, right? Clap. Clap for Stan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving along. So I'm going to say Yahweh signed his name to America. Right there. What do I got here next? So this is the Aleph. And this is the Tav. God is saying, I am the beginning. I'm the end. God's speaking. Amen? Are you listening? Yes, here we go. I am the first and the last. Inside me there is no God. He's saying, I'm the leader. I'm the leader, and this is the mark of the covenant. We hear a lot about the mark here. Do you have the mark, the cross of God on your heart? That's the mark I'm going to take. How about you? I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the Aleph and the Tav. Look at that picture. Just like that. That's how we got to be with God, right? Here's the another picture of a Tav. See the cross? Who are you yoked up to? You know, uh, the scripture says, be not unequally yoked. Um, that doesn't mean to not marry a non-Christian. I'll say it another way. It means a Catholic should marry a Baptist. A uh, Baptist should marry a Pentecostal. You know, you got to be on the same page. Otherwise, it's not going to operate properly. You're going to, you know, I've, I've ministered to a lot of people. Just as an example, <clears throat> the wife will be spirit-filled and the husband's Catholic, or vice versa. You know, there's conflict, you know. 
The spirit-filled people like to come to our church. The Catholics, they don't like to hang out here. No, that's not true in all cases. That's a general broad brush statement, but they're unequally yoked. So make sure uh, that's the Tav. We got to yoke with Jesus. Amen? Amen? Okay, one more thing. Urim, that's the uh, Urim and Thurm. That's the little, uh, the lots. They used to cast lots to make a decision. The priest had that in his pocket on the breastplate. Urim begins with an Aleph, Thurman begins with a Tav. Well, what a coincidence. Ur means lights. Thurman is rooted in a word that means perfect completion or to finish, which represented by the number seven. Light was the first element of the creation and connected to Jesus, the light of the world. That's not the sun, that's God's light, Jesus' light. He also is the author and finisher of our faith, which means he's the Tav the Aleph and the Tav. Okay, so um, I'm just telling you, let's just back up here. I'm telling you God signed his name to America. And I'll say this, um, judgment begins at the house of the Lord. And if you're paying attention, now's a good time to get right with Jesus. If you've been sitting on the fence and you think, ah, I might get saved, I might not get saved, but I'll wait, don't wait. You know, tomorrow might be too late. Give your life to Jesus. Have him come in. Get the mark, mark of God on your heart. Let him drive your life. Because things are changing in America and around the globe. And uh, tomorrow just might be too late. And so these things are happening. So we got the moon, the lunar eclipse Saturday and Sunday. And April 8th is a solar eclipse. And I don't know what's going to happen. But, uh, you know... I don't think God's concerned with the rest of the world, but he's absolutely concerned about his pride, the church. And if we don't get it right, if we don't judge ourselves, you're going to put the hammer down eventually. I'm surprised America's gone as far as it's gone, being how wicked it is, and the politicians, how wicked they are, that we're still functioning. But I know God loves America. I'll tell you one other thing. This X that goes over little Egypt, I'm telling you, man, I feel God's anointing. Uh, excuse me. The X that goes over little Egypt, uh, the last, if you zoom in on that, they tell me that it goes over um, Salem Road in a city park somewhere in Illinois. So God really is, um, he loves America and he loves us and he doesn't want to judge us. But um, if we don't line up, straighten up, you know, there's so many things wrong in America. I mean, he can't just forever turn away from that. Um, in my opinion, we're a lot more wicked than Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, you know, we got to, the church has to do something. We can't just be quiet. We can't just shut up and be politically correct and worry about being censored on our YouTube channels. We got to speak out. If we don't do it now, we'll never do it. We'll, we'll be rounded up and, uh, disposed of uh, and we even know the end is going to happen but I mean why prolong it let's talk about Jesus now let's speak out amen and amen. stop sinning so that's my story and I'm sticking to it that's our website if you like this and more you can click on whitehorseoutreach.com and hit the uh, find my email and become a subscriber Yeah, you guys, uh, tune in at 9.30. It's, it's good. We got great teachings, not just because I'm here, but I mean, we have, I love this church because they open the platform up for the body of Christ. And some of these people have awesome messages. And if you're not catching it, you're really missing out. And, um, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're a special church. We're, we're different than what you get out in the mainstream Christianity. You know, if there's no mysticism here. You know, we're strict. If there's anything out of order, we get it nipped in the bud. You're protected. It's a safe place. And you can come here and express yourself and be a part of the body of Christ. Don't stay home. Come to church. 930. Don't be late or you're a sinner. <laughs> Support us. Uh, White Horse Outreach and Spirit of Prophecy Church. Look at all the places we're going to. 
We preach the gospel, cast out demons, training the equipped pastors. You can partake and be a partaker with us and share in the benefits in the afterlife. There's a website. Connect with White Horse Outreach. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Do it. We need to. Apostle Stan's being shadow banned. I will probably be too. I don't really care, but he cares. He really cares. So help him. Help him grow his channel. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. Welcome this morning to the Spirit of Prophecy Church. We're happy that you're joining us today online. Um, we are going to have a great service today. And if you miss the 930 service, I encourage you to go back and watch that with Pastor Lou. It was amazing. It was awesome. And I learned a lot, and I know you will too. Uh, there was definitely an anointing of the Lord here this morning on that. So if you don't if you don't join us at 930, you're missing a lot of what God is doing. And I encourage you all here at the church here Come for the 930 service, especially my, my the ones I'm training, level ones and level two. Y'all should be here at 930. That's very, very important. You're missing a lot of the, the, the teaching and the training that goes on with that if you're missing that time. So I encourage you to come at 930. Join us. We'd love to have you do that. Anyway, I'll let you go first, Jonathan, if you could tell them about the praise, or excuse me, the intercessory prayer coming up. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So uh, about intercessory prayer, everybody knows that prayer is powerful. Amen. All right, so as you bind forces with all of your comrades, it's even more powerful. So as we are standing on, uh, on the truth of the Bible and agreeing, then things will be done around here. And so uh, we have intercessory prayer every third Thursday of the month. Um, this month is going to be the 21st, so please mark your calendars from 7.30, or sorry, from 6, sorry, 7.30 to 8.30, okay? Um, and we'll send out the Zoom link. It's on a Zoom call, so um, everybody feel free to join. Uh, I actually recommend it. Level one, level two, definitely be there. We'd like yes. to see you. Uh, so if I do not have your email information, please give it to me, and uh, we'd be able to uh, have you join. So again, very important. So this is how we do battle. Let's all join in hands and pray, uh, especially for our church, for our nation, for our families and friends, let's all cover them with the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 It's only an hour a week. Excuse me, hour a month. One hour a month. Uh, it's, again, so my level ones and twos, if you're serious about uh, being a minister of the Lord, you need to, it first starts with intercessory prayer. Amen. I mean, even the prophet levels, uh, you are not ever into the prophet level until you're an intercessor first. And you've got to learn how to tap in. So I encourage you to join them on Thursday, this coming Thursday, the 21st, 730 to 830. It's an hour of your time once a month. Easy to do. Easy to do. Uh, so I encourage you to do that. And if you, those of you online, if you're wanting to join also, you can just send us um, a message through contact at Spirit Prophecy Church. Say that you want to be on that list, and they'll make sure that I'll get that information to Jonathan and Kate, and they will send that out to you. Uh, a couple announcements. Actually, if I could just give you this, Marty, uh, if you could just hand this around. I think we've got some, this is for our fellowship. I think I've got several of the dates filled out already. Um, okay, so we're, we're not having Passover on, in March because it's, it's actually not until April. I believe it starts April 22nd. Does somebody have, but uh, we are going to have our Passover dinner on that Saturday, April the 27th. And then April the 28th is going to be a Resurrection Sunday. We're not going to have Easter because Easter is pagan. So uh, on March 31st, uh, don't come here thinking you're just going to do uh, Easter service. You're going to come and you're going to be trained, equipped, and talked to. <laughs> you're going to have a lot of uh, good information that day. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure who speaks. I think I speak on the 31st, and Danny. Danny's a wonderful teacher. So come join us at 930, and then join me at the 1030 service. Um, also, you can join Stan on Friday nights for Bible study. How many in here are, are, are tuning in to that also? Yeah, I didn't think our church was. Oh, Danny is. Bill is. Okay. Paul is. Okay. We have a few, so we need to really, I mean, he has a lot of followers following him on our Bible studies. So what's happened to the church here? So, again, it's an hour of your time once a week. 
That's not hard to do either. Once a week from uh, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., you can join Stan on, I guess, the Prophecy Club or there's other avenues you can find him on. Uh, but I encourage you to join him for the Bible study. Um, it's, every, it's every Friday from 6.30 to 7.30. And then also, um, let me see if there's anything else right quick. Today is St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. Whatever. I, I, I um, was kind of listening to the news today, and they were trying to explain about St. Patrick's Day, and I'm like, you know, it's one of those things that's, hmm, yeah. Wear green. Oops. Oh, I do have green on. Okay. <laughs> so y'all can't pinch me. I'm good. <laughs> and also, just to, to make sure my level ones and level two know that the training date did change to Saturday, March 30th. Not next Saturday, but March 30th. So I hope everybody had ears to hear that that's when it's going to be. And also you'll have some training with Jonathan on PowerPoint. So I'd encourage you to come for that. Anyway, let's stand. We'll get our service going this morning, and then we're going to take up the offering in just a minute. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can come here this morning to praise and worship you. And Lord, while there's a small group that are here physically in this church, I know that you're speaking through others mightily through these messages that comes from the Spirit of Prophecy Church. We thank you that we have listeners from abroad, even overseas. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We just ask that, there, that more would tune in, whether it's online or if we ask that if they live in the area to come here and physically join us here at this church. Lord, because I know that when we fellowship one with another, it's so important. We become a family. And if you are wanting to become a family, come and join us here at the Spirit of Prophecy Church. And if you don't live in the area, then please join us online. We just call it forth from the north, south, east, and west. We call them in right now in Jesus' name. We declare that this church will be not null and void, but it will actually be fulfillment. We ask for you to, to intercede and just be there before the Father and on our behalf, and we thank you for it. And the Lord, those of you that are watching online that are ill, that are sick, we just ask for the Lord to come and touch you right now to minister to you, to heal you, whatever your sickness, whatever your disease is, in the name of Jesus. I'm a walking miracle, so I know that God does it. And I also thank you, Lord, that if there's anyone here that's not feeling well, Lord, that this is the place to come. When you don't feel well, you come to church and get prayed for. Amen? Amen. That's the way it needs to be done. That's what the church is for, is to pray for those that are sick. So we ask that you come forth, and we'll pray for you here at this church. And we ask that the Lord would be healing you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, it's time for offering. Good morning, church. Time for offering. One for Spirit of Prophecy Church, one for missions. And um, SUNY is at home today incubating some chicken eggs and quail eggs. I think the quail eggs are going to hatch Monday, but... You cannot outgive God, and I said that because you can't count your chickens before they hatch. If you sow into the kingdom, God pays good dividends. If you sow into the field, you can have a big harvest. If you sow little, you get little. You sow a lot, you get a lot. So the field next door to me is a wheat field, and man, it looks really good. And this is the time of the latter rain. This is what makes, there's not even seed on these uh, wheat plants right now but this rain is going to produce the seed that sets on the wheat so the latter rain is now and this is a time to sow and back up spirit of prophecy church and you online too which one is the church i can't this one yes even i sow into the kingdom because if i don't I could starve to death. You know, the scripture says, uh, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or baking bread. So if you are in a financial strait, now's a good time to put in, just like the stove. You can't say, give me heat. I'll put this wood in later. You got to do it first. So this is how you prosper. Give to the Lord and he will pay back. So can you please hand those up for me and Stan, please? And thank you online too. And we will bless you. Test, test, test. Yes, I'm holding it too far away. Lord, this is given in joy. Receive it in joy. We have cheerful givers at Spirit of Prophecy Church and online. I can see you smiling. Lord, receive it. Multiply it back with the latter rain 
to produce a mighty harvest for those who have given into your kingdom. Enjoy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This morning we just say thank you. Thank you for all of the things that you've done for us and given to us. And Lord, we look forward to the time when we can all say in union, salvation, glory, honor, and power to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments. The first words we say when we see you in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We look forward to that moment, and we know that everything we give, everything we do, we receive a reward eternally for it. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Come it's time on. for Communion. Communion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Someone, I talked about <laughs> how I want to give away Bibles and what kind of Bible I want to give away. And people sent me two or three Bibles in as a gift. Exactly what I was looking for. It's like I was asking for it. I wasn't asking for it. One of these days, we're going to give a bunch of not pickup loads, but truck loads of Bibles away. Amen? Amen. So, <clears throat> Lord, the first thing you say is that we should bless the body and the blood. And Lord, this is grape juice. This is unleavened bread. And we know that it means nothing, but it means everything. Because it means that it's the body and the blood of Jesus that was shed, which is the most important, most powerful thing in human history. We thank you for it. If I can do this without spilling it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and distribute it. So, I need to have a... I got to figure this thing out. It works pretty good not having a pulpit until you need a pulpit, right? There we go. Now, ah, excellent. Okay, so if you want to follow along, I'm reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We only do this once a month so that we can do it and make it very special. Verse 34 says, If any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Meaning, what we're about to do is not taking a little snack. And we don't do this unless we've asked Jesus into our heart. Why do you say? Because it says that he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation. Verse 29. Damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What? Okay. So if we take the body and blood wrong, it can bring a curse. Now, what does that mean? If we take it right, it can remove a curse, and it can bring a healing. Because this represents his body that was broken for us. The grape juice represents his blood that was shed for us. And it is through that sacrifice that our body and our soul can be healed. So, Lord, those people that are needing healing this morning, my left knee is hurting right now. I ask you to heal it. Other people that need healings, Lord, we ask you to heal them now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So now we have the body and the blood. So we look back over here and it says, verse 24, When you given thanks, as we have, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And they all ate. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, we remember you in Jesus' name. And Leslie's going to explain how we're going to do praise and worship today. So thank you to the people that sent me the Bible. So I don't have that. It has good text and good paper, but the outside of the other Bible is not so good. We ask forgiveness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Right now, I've been hearing the Lord just say that it's, you know, it's one of our jobs as believers that we tell those that are sinners they need to repent. But the Lord is calling his children to repent. He's calling us to repent. 
That's what he is saying to my heart this morning. You know, have you come back to a heart of worship? Are you thanking him for everything? Are you afraid? You know, what do you need to lay down at Jesus' feet? What do you need to repent of? Because fear is actually sin. You need to give it away. Shame is a sin. You don't need to keep it. So church, those that are here this morning, and those of you that are watching online, the Lord is asking his believers to repent right now, the church to repent right now. Because we are haughty. We are prideful. We don't think that we need to repent for anything. It's time that we get real with God. Turn it down just a little bit, Danny. It's time for us to repent. If you're right with God, you'd be running up here. You'd be coming up here to the altar and say, Lord, I need to repent. And nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. Why aren't you coming running? I need to repent, Lord. I'm not right with you, God. You know, when I'm working over in Pakistan, you bet those people are worshiping God. Hours. When we go to Honduras, I bet you, I want you to know, they are repenting. They have needs. But they are focused on worshiping Jesus. When someone gets saved in Cambodia, they're going to worship and praise our God. Because they're going to know that he's the true God. Christians, you're prideful. You're prideful. You're not even praying for those in leadership over our country. If you were, you'd be praying for them. Yes, pray for them to repent. But you'd be praying for them. Pray that they get right with Jesus. But pray for them. Don't just get mad and not ever say anything to the Lord about it. Instead of griping, we need to be praying for them. Am I right, church? There's church leaders out there. I'm not going to gripe at you today, but I'm going to pray that you repent before Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. Maybe come back to your first love. And I'm going to pray for you that that's what you're going to do. Those of you that are leading the church astray and calling in lying signs and wonders, I forgive you. I forgive you. But more importantly, I'm praying that the Lord will forgive you because you have a repentant heart right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the conviction of the Holy Spirit will go around the globe today to all your believers, all your children, specifically here at Spirit of Prophecy Church and those that follow us. Help us to not be haughty and prideful thinking that we know it all because we don't. Lord, we are so sorry because it is all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. For those who called on angels to heal them, ask forgiveness today because the angels don't heal. Raphael doesn't heal. Jesus heals. Jesus doesn't send out Raphael to heal you. Come on. Jesus is the one that heals. Jesus is the one that does miracles. Jesus is your way to heaven. Church, repent. And those of you watching online, repent right now. Repent today. Maybe you already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you need to step it up a notch. You can't just stay babes in Christ. You can't just keep drinking milk. It's time to choke up that meat a little bit. Lord, help us to remember it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's not about us, how wonderful we are, and how righteous we are, because we're not. 
Forgive us today, Lord. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Lord, I, I thank you for this man of God, and I'm proud to say that he's my husband. Thank you for putting us together in this lifetime, 41 years, over 30 years of ministry together. We were just saying yesterday how much how we are so thankful that you're our boss. We're so thankful for all the things that you have given us to do, places to go, ministering your word, ministering your truth as we see it. Lord, I ask that you just anoint him this morning, bless him this morning, give him the words to speak, let our hearts hear the word, our ears hear the word, our mind know the word as he speaks today. Let us be changed, and let us not walk out the same today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, we say, <clears throat> wisdom and might are yours. You change the times and seasons. You remove the kings and setteth up kings. You giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. You revealeth the deep and secret things. You knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with you. And Lord, we thank you this morning for the finished work you did on the cross. No one took your life. You laid it down. You laid it down and you took it up. And now this nation that you raised up, that was not a nation. You brought us from around the world to create a new nation, a nation for your name, a nation that could be the bright light on the mountaintop to spread the gospel, the glory of the Lord around the world. And now, the nation that you started for your purpose has fallen, has fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For she saith in her heart, is said a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And Lord, we know that we are living in Sodom and Gomorrah, but we also know that you said that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And this morning, you've directed me to bring a message of hope, a message of protection, and that you are quite able and will protect those that walk with you. I ask you to give me the words and help your words to be received into the heart of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So, before I reveal the title of what I'm going to talk on this morning, let me refresh your memory. It was June 14th of 2008. I just finished speaking in Amarillo that night, my prayer closet. Before I went to bed, I said, Lord, I hope you're pleased with what we're doing because it's not working so good. Spending $3,500 in advertising per city, not many people showing up, not many people getting saved, not many people interested in prophetic oil. I went to bed. And that night I heard God. I heard words. I mean, I heard audible words and they woke me up and they said, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. I woke up, actually spoke out loud. I said, the oil well in Israel, but there was no response. But what I usually don't go into is for the rest of the evening, it was like I was going to school. It's like I was sitting in that desk again, and all night long, God began to speak to me. Now, I'd love to be able to tell you all the things he told me, but I can only remember one thing from all of that evening. He showed me Leslie standing in front of our fireplace at our house, holding up newspapers. Newspaper after newspaper after newspaper with the headlines. And the headlines started with Omer Usher's in Palestinian state. Catastrophe hits America. One of America's greatest times of need. 
Israel refuses help to America. Chaos reigns as Americans protest help to Israel. Then I heard, she heard my voice quoting Dimitri, the fall of America will start with an internal revolution in America started by the communists. I personally believe that we're about to see some of those headlines this year. 2024 is going to prove to be a year like we've never seen in our lifetimes. I think we're about to see at the conclusion of this war, Palestinians will be given a state. I think Israel is going to come to the conclusion that the whole world is basically twisting their arm. But America, that is supposed to be that nation, that protector nation, protecting his apple of his eye, protecting Israel, and we're not doing it. Instead, America forces Israel to give the Palestinians a state. And when she does, when we split Jerusalem, God splits America. And there's going to be an earthquake. And the New Madrid falls, say the prophecies. And that will bring the second newspaper headline that says, Catastrophe Hits America. As a result, that brings the next headline, One of America's Greatest Times of Need. So America cries to the world, Help, help, help! We helped you all these years, now help us. And our good friend Israelis, the Jews, because we just stabbed them in the back by forcing them to split Israel, specifically Jerusalem, Israel refuses help to America. Chaos reigns as Americans poked, well, I don't think that one happens this year, so I'll, I'll end it there. In case you don't know, as Lou was just talking about this morning, about a year ago, they flew five red heifers from Texas. Four of those red heifers are still approved to be part of the sacrifice to start animal sacrifice in Israel again. Why is that important? Because Daniel 9.27 in that ballpark says that he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Sacrifice? What sacrifice? They're not sacrificing animals in Israel. As a matter of fact, no. They haven't sacrificed animals in Israel since about 70 A.D. So it's been almost 2,000 years since they sacrificed animals in Israel. We're about to see it start in our lifetime. Not an accident. I think that Israel, given the Palestinians to state part of that deal, will be that Israel will get back control of whatever land it takes, probably the Temple Mount, and they will start animal sacrifice again. I've received many emails, send me to many articles that say that they've got everything ready to start building the Temple, to start animal sacrifice. They've got everything ready, everything they need, except for one thing, the ashes of a red heifer, the ashes of a red female cow because that will give them, that what they do is they, they put that in a kalal, which is a, a vessel, the ashes of the heifer, put it into a vessel, made a part of the dung of the animal, and then they take a straw. They dip that into the ashes, and whatever sticks to the end of that straw, then they sprinkle it over the vats of water. Remember Jesus said, he, remember he, they turned the water to the wine? Okay. Those were the vats of purification. So they sprinkle it over these vats. Very, very minute amount. But with that minute, minute amount, it purifies the water. Then they take hyssop, which is a weed that grows in Israel. If you've not had hyssop, you think x lax cleans like a white tornado? You ain't had anything until you have taken some hyssop. I found out the hard way. I ordered me some of that hyssop in the essential oil, and I thought... Phew. Well, about 30 minutes later, just from rubbing a drop on me, I'm in the bathroom because it, it's a cleaning agent. It cleans better than Mr. Clean, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so they take this, this hyssop and they dip it in the water and then they sprinkle it on the Sanhedrin, they sprinkle it on the sacrifice, they sprinkle it on the altar, the whatever they need in order to purify that to start animal sacrifice. What I'm saying is we will probably see for the first time in almost 2,000 years animal sacrifice started in Israel. 
everybody should have their mouth drop open when that happens because that prophetically that's huge we're probably going to see that this year but there's more I could stand here for the next hour going through prophecy probably we're going to see the death of the dollar this year the dollar will fall 30 percent just like that overnight that's what the prophecies say no time to prepare 30 percent down 50 percent down 66 percent down worthless as leaves blowing in the wind and they're going to bring out a new currency system but i don't have time to get into all that i say all of that because i want to let you know that we're about to see changes many of them bad but in the midst of all this there's about to be revival and i can't tell you how many pastors probably every one of them have been praying for revival for years but what we don't understand is what causes the revival is trouble so as i dropped to my knees yesterday the lord what do you want to say he said tell them how I'm able to protect them. And what I was led to do is, well, first of all, let me give you, these kind of things I'm just talking about, you need to hear them. Not that we need more people listening to Prophecy Club, nor do we need you listening to Prophecy Club, because God is our provider, but you need it. So these two programs, you want to go and listen to them. You can hear them at prophecyclub.com and just about on every other platform out there. You want to watch this one, New Trouble, soon to start, but short-lived. It's very encouraging. It also tells you what's coming. Then the rebirth of America. It's also very encouraging, but it also talks about the trouble coming. I think these are extremely important. Go watch them. Now, with that in mind, so let's jump to Daniel chapter 3. You're familiar with this. However, we're, we're supposed to be familiar with everything in the Bible. We're supposed to already read the whole Bible, so we really shouldn't be hearing anything new but we need to get it down in our heart. So the king spake to Askenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring a certain number of the children of Israel, of the king's seed and the princes, whom were no blemish, well-favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, such as had the ability in them, in other words, they weren't stupid. Bring them. And we're going to feed them the special king's meat and his wine, which was probably pork and alcohol which Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel knew they should not eat. Daniel purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself with all of the wonderful um, caviar, so to speak, from the king's table. As a result of that, God blessed him because wisdom and might are his. He changed the times and seasons. He removed the king's set of the up kings. He gave the wisdom to the wise. He gave the wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He found them 10 times better. Why? This is the point. Because they followed God's laws. Now let's jump to Daniel chapter 6. So it pleased Darius, which was the leader uh, at this time, to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. We would call them like 120 congressmen or senators. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. So Daniel, at this point, that makes him second in the kingdom, right? So we've got the king, we've got Daniel, and 120 princes. Daniel was preferred above the presidents because he had an excellent spirit. Where did he get that excellent spirit? You see, when we've asked Jesus into our heart, when he comes in, he changes our heart. That's a good place for an amen, right? He changes our heart. And he makes us into, he leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us into the paths of righteousness. So he helps us to learn to walk the narrow path rather than the broad way. So these men said, oh, we don't want to find anything this guy does wrong except the law of his God. So they set about with this big conspiracy. They got the king to sign a piece of paper that they knew Daniel would be breaking. Daniel knew the writing was signed, but what did he do? Not a, ch a thing changed. 
In other words, he was worshiping God before. He continued to worship God. Now, what's the point? In our nation, I don't have to tell you that there are laws being passed in other nations as well as ours. It's called hatred. Now, that sounds like, a oh, we don't want to hate people. But you see what they're going to do. Well, if you tell people that the only way to go to heaven is to have to accept Jesus, that's hate. Right? If you tell people they need to go to church, that's hate. If you tell people they need to read their Bible, that's hate. This is what the prophecies say. But Daniel did what he did as a foretime, meaning the word for us today, people online or in the congregation here, people watching this in the future, don't let the world change you. Let me give you an example. Which example do I want to use, Lord? I can tell you several. We had, uh, back in the job I had before, he had hired these two black ladies, fine by me, I don't hire them, they don't report to me, they're doing the same job I did, and you know, I try to be nice to them, no problem. But one day the boss called me on the carpet, I walk in, and here's one of these black ladies. Now I say, I, re I identify her as having black skin because I think that's important to the story, otherwise I wouldn't necessarily need to tell you she's black because the truth is I have noticed when they have Jesus in their heart doesn't make any difference the color of their skin doesn't make any difference what nation they were born in or where they were raised Amen. right Amen. a real Christian's colorblind when we get in heaven we'll be colorblind I don't know well maybe we'll all have same color skin I don't know won't make any difference Jesus in their heart not a problem right so I walked in boss says her down, uh, she has a complaint against you. What? I, you know, to this day, I can't remember what she said. It was nothing. And I said, well, I have a complaint against her. What? You do not. She was like offended, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying. Have you ever had anybody give you the, the offended play, the offended car? <laughs> you do not. Oh, yes, I do. And it was a big one. As a matter of fact, it breaks one of the big ten. What was it? What was it? You name it. I didn't do anything to you. And I said, oh, yes, you did. You said, Jesus Christ, like a cuss word. And I said, I'll tell you what. Jesus Christ is not a cuss word. Jesus Christ is the name of my Lord and Savior, and that is taking his name in vain. And you not only offended me, but you broke one of the ten commandments. And this black lady turned white. <laughs> She turned white. End of discussion. What am I saying? It's time for us to stand up for the name of Jesus. I'll give you another example that keeps coming to mind. I guess I need to tell you this one. So I was going down to a three-day training class in Houston. I'll even tell you the name of the class. It's been 30 years since I was in that business. It was the Strategic Presentations Workshop, very large training organization. And this was so that if the fire chief had to go and speak before the news, or if the sheriff or the police chief has to go and speak before the news, and some tragedy has happened, what do you do when you're in front of the camera? And I was going to be one of the instructors of this to teach people how to handle themselves in front of cameras in difficult situations. This is what I did for 13 years. Okay. When it started, the leader, which was, I discovered later, pretty new age, obviously not a Christian, started with a story about how she went to the airport to pick up her guru and how they had two children running in front of the guru, throwing rose petals in front of the guru. And I thought, okay, you just opened the door to talk about your God which means you opened the door for me to talk about mine. How many of us won't talk about the fact that we're Christians at work? We won't, talk, we won't stand up for Jesus. So she told the story, no problem. The very first, 
The very first disciple, I'm probably not even going to get to the message today. <laughs> the, uh, the very first assignment was, tell us in two minutes something you're passionate about. Thank you. Thank you. I've been waiting to tell you about my passion. Oh, thank you. Leslie says, you know, it doesn't take anything for Stan to get in a conversation about Bible prophecy or Jesus. So guess what I t- <laughs> I talked about my passion, about how we can have our sins forgiven by Jesus. And I could see this lady, you know, like when we had those comedies when we were a kid, Tom Terrific, where when he would start turning red, she was getting angry. But she also knew she'd open the door. I could say anything I want about my God because she started talking about her God. And she knew it. And I knew it. And I thought, you're going to hear about Jesus. So every one of my talks was about Jesus. I might add that next week was when the door started opening up for me to go into ministry. I think... If you want to serve Jesus, you have to be willing to serve Jesus in front of your friends that don't believe, your boss, your brothers, sisters, whoever it is, you've got to have the confidence to stand up. In other words, just like Daniel did, as he did aforetime. Are we strong enough to stand up for Jesus and not bend, not buckle? That's the correct answer, okay. I'll I'll help you out here, okay. So, continuing with the story. So he didn't change anything. He broke their laws. So then the people that were accusing Daniel said, Ha! He broke the laws! you got to punish him. Well, the punishment is for him to be cast and do a den of lions. So the king said, okay, fine. I think he knew Daniel. I think he knew Daniel had a walk with this God of his that God would protect him. Hey, here's a question. Do people around you know? You know where I'm going. Do they, people around you know that you have a walk with Jesus? Or do you have to tell them, oh, I'm a Christian. If you have to tell them you're a Christian, you're not doing so good. So he says, you go ahead, throw him in the den of lions. His God will deliver thee. And even the king said to Daniel, your God, whom thou servest, he will deliver thee. Sure enough, stones put above him, laid out. The next morning, bright and early, the uh, the, the king goes to Daniel. Daniel, oh Daniel, are you alive? Is that God whom thou servest continually? Is he able to deliver thee? Are you in there? What did Daniel say? Daniel said, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, has shut the lion's mouths, that they hurt me not, for as much as before him, meaning God and you, Innocency was found in me. Okay, that's a big point. If we want Jesus to walk with us and talk with us and protect us and guide us, innocency should be found in us. I think they call it blameless without sin. But Stan, we can't be perfect. No, we can't. That's why the blood of Jesus is there. But we sure ought to be trying. This is a good thing, right? (laughs) Innocent was found as me, and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Okay, what's that saying? He's saying, spiritually, I'm innocent, but also in the ways of the world politically. I'm also innocent. We're supposed to follow the laws of the land. So then, Daniel was taken up out of the den. No man of hurt was fed upon him because he believed in his God. The the lions just kept him warm in the cold of the the den that morning. A little chilly. 
But the lions just kept him warm. So he, then the king commanded, okay, bring me those princes, those 120 princes that wanted to kill the prophet. See, that's what Purim is. Because the prophet, Mordecai, was supposed to be hung in the gallows. But God turned it around through Esther, and instead, Mordecai, not, Mordecai was free, and, and Haman the evil guy that wanted to kill the Jews, he was hung. And all of the other Jews were said, hands off. Hands are, the Jews are blessed. You know, I think that's what I mean. You don't want to know what I think about what's going on in Israel right now. I'm very much Israel. Don't say it, Stan. Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't like it because I'm very, very pro-Israel. <clears throat> Yeah, so I won't say anything, Leslie said. Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm very pro-Israel. I'm very, 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 very pro-Israel. I'd say, putting it kindly, I would say to all of the people in Gaza, hit the road, Jack. Find another land to live on. That's our land. That's as nice as I can say it. Anyway, so they cast the 120 princes in the den of lion, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had mastery over them and break all of their bones every time they come to the bottom of the den. 120. So this would be like, in today, this would be like if the whole Congress, the senators, 100, the representatives, 435, had accused Daniel and all eaten up by the lions. Now think about it. If there were, how many lions were in that den? Three or four? Let's say five or ten. How long would it take them to eat 120 people, their wives and their children, and they can't get out of the den? It didn't happen in 30 minutes. It probably didn't happen in 30 days. That's a pretty bad punishment, right? All because they turned against God. So what I'm saying today is stand strong in the Lord. That's what he's telling us. He knows how to protect us. He knows how. He's quite capable. If he can feed three million people out of thin air, water them out of a rock. I've been inside the rock. It did not come up from the ground. It was formed out of thin air. He brought manna down out of thin air. He can feed us and water us out of thin air, I promise I've seen it. Yes. He can do it. question is not whether he will do it either. We just have to make certain that innocency Amen. is found in us. So the king wrote to all the nations, everybody got to observe that God. All right, let's go on. Now, <clears throat> you've all met Dana. He's been in this church. He's been to a couple of different crusades with us. We know him to be a man of God. This is only part of what he was shown in a dream. The dream, the room darkened and the screen revealed running taglines saying things like, avoid the unvaccinated. These people are dangerous. Please inform authorities of all sightings. If you see it, report it. See what I'm saying? Then the screen showed a group of people, about eight people, running along a ditch near a field of corn that had been, not been har harvested yet. They carried backpacks and several large earth brown tarps. I think that's to cover their bodies so that the body heat wouldn't be seen. Meaning that they're searching them from probably drones, possibly even satellites too. The sun was setting. They had two scouts closely watching ahead of them and two scouts behind. When lights appeared on the road in either direction, they quickly ran into the field about 30 feet in, covered themselves with a tarp and laid extremely still. No movement, no noise was made until the vehicle was well behind them, meaning they're searching by heat and also sound. It was a coordinated effort among the people, including children and dogs. As the threat passed, the people emerged. They ran straight ahead until they came to a T in the road. Scouts on either side of the road were near the railroad track, flashlights telling them it was clear to rock cross. They ran quickly. Once they reached the ditch, a light blinked from the window of the garage of home. By now it was dark and the scouts started moving quiet, quickly moving 
a few people at a time. They had to lay flat on the ground as possible. The group crawled with the window, through the window, and just as it, it closed, helicopter with searchlights searched the area they had just left. They're coming for us. If you don't have that mark of the beast, they're coming for you. But our God is able. And even if they catch us, we're not going to deny them. <clears throat> the scene changed to an EMS alert. The signal blared loud with a reporter saying martial law, martial law had been declared. Anyone caught outside after 7 p.m. would be arrested and taken to their local <clears throat> authority for processing and fined up to $10,000. The reporter said, if you see something, say something. Safeguard your community from those dangerous assailants. Do your country proud and turn them in. Today, it's, you know what I'm saying. But tomorrow, it's going to be the mark of the beast. Right? Okay. The screen changed back to the people being hogtied, hogtied. You know what hogtied is? Hands and feet behind you like this. Okay. Hogtied and thrown to the back of the cattle trucks and hauled off. People inside were yelling, screaming at the handlers. The handlers were all well armed. They used electric shock cattle prods to shock the people to back up. Hmm. The screen went blank and the man I see often, that's the angel, I take it you are the specialist, he said. You are right, and I will explain what you've seen if you'd like to understand. He said, please. You're seeing the present future, present future, <clears throat> and the, conserv the coming conservative purge. So he's seeing what just happened over the last few years, but he's also seeing to the future. Conservative purge, how many of you have heard about those purge movies? Yeah, they got those purge movies where they say for 24 hours you can kill, maim, rape, whatever you want to do, and get by with it. Remember those, those kind of movies? Yeah. I think those were all part of their plan. The Antichrist spirit is here, and yet they begin to make purchase, <clears throat> make the purchase to just try this again. The Antichrist spirit is here, and yet they begin to make the purchase to deceive the world with healing blood that that will mock the blood of Christ. This blood is not my blood, will never heal or forgive or restore, but they must appear to have power if it's, even if it's empty. Yet many will claim and empty their will to declare its worthless virtue. You must stay braced. Every believer is about to have their bracing revealed and the foundation uncovered. As the specialist, I warn you to take the salve of your eyes, stop coating your life with wine, that's sin, <clears throat> and stay fully sober as the day of his arrived for the testing of your life. Wine of sin, the day may be the tribulation of testing life is the mark of the beast. He then touched my forehead, leaving an ashen mark with his fingerprint. He reached into his left jacket pocket with his right hand, took out a small white cloth and wiped it off. I'm marking those who are mine and I will walk beside them in the fire. What fire? Even though some of you here in this country will meet me soon on the other side. What's he just saying? He's just saying a bunch of Americans about to die. He grabbed my hand, squeezed it until I could feel the goodness of virtue coming into my body. Then he said, be faithful unto death and I'll give you a crown. No, no, no. He said, don't worry, the rapture's coming to save you. <laughs> Why is it we don't hear from the real prophets them talking about a rapture coming to get saved and you don't have to worry about any of this stuff? Now, those are the verses of the conservative purge, and if you want to read them, I'll let you pause and read them. But it's just saying that there's, there's a lot of Christian blood going to be shed. Let me get to the next thing because I'm about to run out of time. <clears throat> Golden statue in today's time. So let's go back to Daniel. So Nebuchadnezzar made a, an image of gold whose height was three square cubits and breadth six cubits. And if you skip on over to the next part, he says, and they were, uh, oops, no, 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 that's, that's what I'm going to say. That's not what I want to say. I want to come back to that. At that time, what year, <clears throat> and that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image. See, the Bible repeats itself. 
What happened in Daniel's day has happened several times and it's going to happen, but the eventual time is with the image of the beast. <clears throat> now, so let's back up to these. Why do we not want to take the mark of the beast? If you look at verse 2, it says, And as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them gotten victory over the beast. One. Over his image. Two. Over his mark. Three. And over the number of his name. So, there's actually four things. Not just the mark of the beast. There's four things we must not ever do. We must not ever worship the beast or his image or receive his mark or the number of his name. Four things we can't do. Now, if we do them. Okay, I thought I put that up there. I didn't, so I'll move on. So the same thing happened to Daniel. Fall down and worship the golden image. Whoso have fallen not down and worship shall. And in those days, it was to be burned. But today... Who knows what's going to be the punishment? So, to finish the story, verse 11, Whoso falleth not down worship, he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So after they, I'll back up. So they cast Shadrach, Meshach, verse 12, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men of the king, they have not regarded them, they cast him into the lake burning with fire and brimstone. Question, why was Daniel not cast in with them? because he was number two in the kingdom. So he was beyond question. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his buddies, they were cast in. So Nebuchadnezzar was full of rage that they would not worship his image. As a result of this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were called in front of the king. The king says, Is it true that you don't want to go in and worship my God? And he said, It's true. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, right? Amen? And he will deliver us out of thine hand, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Same thing is coming. Same thing is coming. It's the image of the beast. Okay. <clears throat> Well, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and he cast them into the burning fiery furnace, made it uh, high, heat seven times more. And then they fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. The king said, oh, wait, 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 wait. Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They said, true, O king. Well, then you want to tell me how come I see four people walking in the midst of the fire. As a matter of fact, one of them looks like an angel, the Son of God. So Nebuchadnezzar goes to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, get your body out here, boy. That's the way we'd say it today. Come out here today. Get out of there. Come here. The bodies, the fire no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. There were coats changed, nor the smell of their fire passed on them. And the king said, No one in the kingdom is to serve another God because no one can deliver after this God, nor serve nor any God except their own God. They would not bend, they would not buckle. So the message is to all Christians that walk with God, if you're walking with God, He knows how to provide. He knows how to protect. All, he, all we have to do is make certain that we have innocency found in us <clears throat> and everything is going to be okay. And if we do find ourselves in a world of trouble, I think that they had the correct answer right here where they said, uh, verse 17, He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king, but if not, be it known to thee, we're not going to bow down and worship your God. We're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Amen. No, never deny Jesus. That's what Leslie makes everybody says. I will never deny Jesus. I will never deny Jesus. Jesus is looking for people that want to spend eternity with him. Where we're hunger no more, thirst no more, neither shall the sun, the light on us, nor any more heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed us and lead us into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. Amen. Amen. 
I look forward to the time when I hear that voice that says, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of a great thunder, the voice of many waters, saying, Salvation to our God that sitteth upon the throne and to the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who should be able to stand? The day when he returns. The day when the heavens roll back like a scroll. You know what? I don't think I'm going to see that. I think my viewpoint is going to be your viewpoint. I think that as I look to my right, look to my left, I think you're going to be there with me on white horses, along with the armies in heaven. We're following Jesus as we just come from the marriage supper of the Lamb. We get to see him use the morning star in a moment in a twinkling of an eye to remove the evil from the earth. And by the way, it's not just the earth. It's from the universe. He dissolves the sun, moon, and the stars. And heaven, too. He makes a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Lord, we ask you to forgive our sins this morning. Let's all say it. Jesus, forgive my sins. One more time. Jesus, forgive my sins. One more time. Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Be my God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, send me an email to this email address. And also, I encourage you to become a member of the Spirit of Prophecy Church. You don't have to actually sit in a pew in here to be a member, even if you're online, even if you're watching a recording. Just go to spiritofprophecychurch.com, spiritofprophecychurch.com, slide down on the left-hand side, where it says in blue, become a ministry member. Click that, and you can join us here at the Spirit of Prophecy Church. Also, if you'd like to donate, if you would like to be have innocency found in you where you're following all of God's laws, then you an easy way to do that would be to scan that. Now, let me say something. <clears throat> I was talking to a man on the phone today, and he was telling me about how he sends all of his ties to Spirit of Prophecy Church, Prophecy Club, and I've heard him say that several times. And I said, can I broaden your horizons a little bit? He said, well, sure. I said, well, when we tithe, that's the minimum we're to give. That's just like, okay, if you're not supposed to go over 30 miles an hour, you don't go over 30 miles an hour. But with God, if you want even more blessings, He's saying you, there's, there's gifts and offerings that you can give above just 10%. And I said, now not that I'm suggesting that you give this to Spirit of Prophecy Church or Prophets Club. I'm suggesting that perhaps you give it some other place. I said, here's what I would suggest. We talked about it for a while, but I'll get to the point. I said, why don't you pray and say, Lord, show me a place of need. Show me someone in need Maybe where I give to them and it answers such a need that they start crying. Because he will. He will. And you will feel a peace in your heart like you felt when you got baptized. A peace will come to your heart that passes all understanding. He will confirm you're supposed to give that. And by the way, don't think, you don't, don't like calculate. Okay, let's see, I got the car payment, I got the house payment, I got this. Can I do that? <laughs> he just touched me. <laughs> Instead, Lord, show me some place. And Lord, and I, I pray this right now again. Lord, be show me some place this week here in the, in the near future where I can give and it'll help them in such a way that they'll start crying. Amen. Give. Press down, shaking together, and it'll run over. Because when you give and you feel that anointing come on you, you feel that peace that comes in you. And here's another thing. I don't always say, well, what do you need? I'll just close my eyes and just ask the Lord in my heart, how much do I give? A lot of times it's a lot more than what they were going to ask for. But then when I give that and I give according to his spirit, guess what? And that peace comes on me and I know I did what he was supposed to what he told me to do. I get blessed. But I'm not looking for the blessing because we're supposed to give, hoping for nothing in return, right? 
So we give. And we get blessed. Amen? So, I encourage you to click like, share, and subscribe, and you can give by clicking the link below too. Lord, help us to have innocency in our heart. Help us to be blameless, be walking with you. Put us in the position to where we can be part of your great revival, to see miracles on our left and our right, such as no one has seen going all the way back to Adam and Eve. We want to be part of your end-time revival in Jesus' name.